Hi, welcome back. My name is Christine. I like to read dark and disturbing things. And today my video is going to be a reading wrap up for July. And we can see, let's see, I read 12 non-graphic novel books. So let's check out what I read this month. <laughs> All right, so if you see me looking down, it's because I have my little cheat sheet here in my reading journal um, where I keep track of everything I read. And um, I read 12 novels or novellas, I guess, some of them. And I just wanted to reference this because I feel like some of these were so long ago, um, even though it was just a few weeks ago. So let's hop right into it. I'm just gonna go in the order in which I read everything. And the very first thing I read was Wonder. And this is a book that I read. Um, thank you to Zach at Shadyside Library. I saw his video about this, which I'm going to link down below because it is really what inspired me to read this book. And after I put this in my TBR that I was going to read this, I had several of you reach out to me and tell me how much you love this book and how much it meant to you or your family. And um, thank you for doing that. I do really appreciate it. It really made me even get more out of this book. So in case you don't know what this is about, this is a middle grade book that is about a boy named Augie who was born with some facial differences. And because of that, he has not gone to school his whole life. And he's had lots of surgeries. He's had to be in and out of hospitals. So there was a lot going on and he is going to go to school for the first time. And I'm trying to remember, I think it's fifth grade that he's going into. Um, so he's going into school for the first time and it's just about dealing with, first of all, going to school for the first time in fifth grade has got to be rough. I can only imagine. And then to to do this when, you're ha when you look different, um, just, I mean, the, it, things are stacked against you, right? So it, it's really just about this boy and his family and um, just what, what they go through and how they learn to adapt and, and live life and have a good time. So what I really loved about this book was that it didn't, most of it was from Augie's perspective, but then it started going from other people in his life's perspectives, not his parents, but like his friends and his sister. And I especially um, like to read from his sister's point of view, because there's a lot that she has to deal with being the sibling of someone that looks different and has had all these medical complications. Um, she's very protective of him and she's had to learn how to um, kind of be, I guess, second fiddle to her brother because his needs come first. And she understands that and she accepts that. But it's just a perspective that I think that I would not have thought about. So I would have thought about Augie's perspective. And you don't realize how much that can affect um, having any kind of physical or medical difference that, you know, requires some extra attention how that can actually affect the siblings as well. Like I would think of it from a parent's point of view. I would think of it from that person's point of view, but I thought it was interesting to see how the sister had her own things that she had to deal with because of this, as well as, you know, his best friends and friends at school, things like that. So I, I really enjoyed the different perspectives. Um, I did a book tag last month sometime and it asked me if a, what book made me cry? And I said, you know, I can't think of any book that made me cry because it doesn't happen very often. This book made me cry. It got to this cold black heart and I shed a tear or two. Um, there are some scenes that are especially touching with their pet. I think their dog's name was Daisy. And it's just interesting um, how, you know, dogs have this unconditional love because they don't care what you look like. They don't care if you're cool. They don't care if you're smart or funny or anything. They just love you for who you are. And that, that got me. <laughs> I feel like there's so much more to say about this book that I'm not saying, but I just think you should go out and read it. Everyone should read this book. I asked my son if, because um, he just finished sixth grade. So I asked him if he read this book in school and he did say that yes in grade school. 
maybe around fourth grade, he thought they all read it together as a class. And I think it's just so important. It's about, it's about acceptance. It's about so much. Just, just go read the book, please. Everyone should be required in life to read that book. Oh yeah, I gave it five stars. The next couple books I did already talk about um, in my summer ween vlog. So I'm going to link that down below and I'm just going to briefly talk about them because I did already discuss them and no one wants to hear about them again. So one of them that I read was The Last Word uh, by Taylor Adams. This is a thriller about a person who writes a one star review on a book and um, the author ends up replying to that one star review telling them that they need to take it down and things get a little crazy from there uh and it was a fast fun time um as most thrillers are i don't read a ton of thrillers but i did really i quite like this one i gave it four out of five stars i then read queen of teeth by Haley piper for katrina brown's um book club it was her first book read for her book club and it was a good one <laughs> um this is a bizarre novella about a woman who finds that she's got teeth in her vagina as well as some tentacle action. So it is very sci-fi. It was very bizarre and it was fun. Um, I gave that four out of five stars. And the last one I read during that summer ween was Until Summer Comes Around. I gave that two and a half out of five stars. So I'm not even going to get into it. Um, again, you could just see my video if you would like to know more. During that time period, I also listened to a book, and this is all of Crystal's fault at Crystal over at Fiber Artsy. Um, she was talking about how she really liked the book True Grit, and something she said about it just made me want to read it. I don't... Look, if you ever ask me if there is a genre of books that I have zero interest in, none, at all it would be westerns i just i've never cared about the movies i don't i just don't care and something about that time period none of it really interests me but something she said i was like huh it's on script i'll give it a listen and i freaking loved that book um oh this is a book about a young woman named maddie and she's she's just a spitfire of a girl and really what i love about the book is this character maddie she is on a quest if you will to find out to find the person who killed her father she knows who it is she sees that um look these police these sheriffs aren't doing anything about it people don't seem to care enough about it i'm gonna get things done because that's the way it should be think this needs to be taken care of and if you're not gonna do it i'm gonna do it I think she's only like 14 years old, but man, she just, oh, I love her. So she, she gathers uh, the people that she needs to travel with. She weasels her way into uh, making people do what she wants. She's a very stubborn and she just doesn't quit. Like that's the thing is she just doesn't quit. She is not going to give up. And I absolutely loved it. She gave me a very much um, the same type of vibes as Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird, which is one of my favorite characters. And I, I mean, she was a bit different, but she still just has that. She has this innocence about her, but she also, so she's able to look at the world very black and white and see it for what it is but she's also very stubborn and she's just not a quitter and I love her. I gave this book four out of five stars and I really just had such a good time and it surprised the heck out of me. Oh there was one more book that I did read during Summerween and that was Cameron Chaney's Autumn Crow. This is a set of short stories which I'm usually not a huge fan of short stories but I highly recommend this collection if you want to get into the spooky mood, if you want to get into the fall Halloween vibes and just be ready for it. Like I know some of us are ready all the time but this was just a fun collection of stories. I really love the setting of Autumn Crow, like the whole, just the town. Um, I would really love to visit a town like this. You know how you see in like Hocus Pocus or in any kind of Halloween movie where the town is just like 
all out fall. They've got little carnivals going on. They're like all in on the fall Halloween spirit and the whole town's in on it. And it just looks like such a cozy place with all the trees turning color, but that's not how it is in real life. Or if there is a place like that, like that, that exists, I would love to go there. Just, you know, where they've got stands of apple drinks and pumpkin drinks and just why can we not make that happen it happens in books all the time and it happens in movies so obviously we want this as a collection of people can we come together and just make this happen please thank you anyway i highly recommend these short stories and uh look at the cover i mean the cover is perfection i love it there is a part two i think it's not out yet i thought it was but it's not i think it's called autumn crow high I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I cannot wait to get my hands on that. Next up, I read Maeve Fly, and I this has been on my radar for like the past month because a lot of people that I watch on BookTube have read this and love this book, and I was very excited to get to it. Um, so a lot of people said that this had American Psycho vibes only from a female perspective, and I was not too sure how I felt about that because I haven't read American Psycho, but I have seen the movie. I saw it, I mean, it's probably 10 years ago, but I didn't love it. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it was the actor or just the, that character in general. I just, I know you're not supposed to like him, but I, I don't know. I didn't get it, I guess. I didn't love it. So I was a little bit worried that I would not love this book, our main character, Maeve, she is a, a Disney princess. I don't know. Can I say the D word on here? She is a princess at a very popular amusement park in California. And she plays an ice princess. And she absolutely loves her job. Um, and we are watching her. God, how do you even explain this book? She is currently living with her grandmother um, who is very ill and is basically like old Hollywood royalty. And a lot of this book is a love letter to LA. And it's kind of interesting that I like this book as much as I did because I don't love LA. <laughs> I mean, I've only been there as a, as a tourist or as a visitor. I have not lived there but I went to visit someone who did live there and I did not love it. It was, LA, is, that scene is not my thing. Hollywood is not my thing, but it was interesting to see this from her eyes and see the beauty and the kitsch, uh, the love for the kitsch that I, of all the things that I dislike, she found ways to like those things and I could appreciate that. She ends up, meeting her best friend's brother who is a hockey player and they end up in this very interesting relationship that starts off um very sexual in nature and just goes to some weird ass places and it is a ride it is a fun <laughs> i don't know what this says about me but it is a fun ride i I don't even know what to say. I did not know what was coming next. I did not. It's like trying to predict chaos. I I don't know. I loved this book. I love this character. I had such a fun time. It was so bizarre. It was so out there. There was so many mentions of uh, different music and movies, especially music that I 100% loved. And I feel like I'm explaining this very poorly, but if you like messed up books, then I, I suggest you read this one. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Uh, next up, I listened to The House with Good Bones by, by T. King Fisher. Um, I had heard mixed things about this book and this, this one is set up very much like many other books, but the one that really comes to mind is, is Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. And this is about a woman who is, 
She's coming back home to visit with her mother and things just don't seem right as soon as she gets there. She thinks her mom is acting completely different and she has completely redecorated her home. So this house that used to belong to her grandmother who passed away like 20 years ago um, was left to her mom who has lived there ever since. And her mom had like repainted everything and redecorated it the way that she would like it. But since uh, our main character has left and come back, she sees that her mom has like repainted it back into all of the neutral colors that it used to be when her grandmother owned the house, as well as hanging up certain portraits that um, she knew her mom really disliked. So she's like, why would she hang that back up? That picture is awful. Uh, we both hate it, um, but grandma liked it. And her mom is just not acting herself at all. To me, it seemed very clear what was going on from the from the start and I felt like I spent a good chunk of this book just waiting for our character our main character to get there um, to accept it because she has a very scientific mind she is I'm forgetting the word for it but she studies insects and basically um, like will dig up will will be present on dig sites and can determine what happened in the past based on the bugs that she's finding in the soil or like the remains of bugs that she's finding in the soil. So there is a lot and I mean a lot of talk about insects and bugs in general as well as flowers and I don't know I just wasn't super into it I didn't really care it felt like it was focused on that a little more than it needed to be but because our character is a scientist, she does not believe in any kind of uh, paranormal activity and it takes her a very long time to come to terms with what is probably happening in this home. And to me, that was kind of a boring ride. <laughs> there was a scene at the end that I really enjoyed. Um, I don't really want to mention exactly what it is because I don't want to, you know, spoil anything, but it has to do with roses and I really enjoyed that imagery of what was going on. But beyond that, I just, I was kind of bored. Um, there was a lot of humor put into this that made, kept making me think like, this is something my mom or grandma would think is funny. Like, I appreciate that they were trying to give this character kind of a humorous, lighter tone to their their voice but there was just a lot of jokes that were like that's a mom joke <laughs> that's a grandma I bet my grandma would find this funny and I don't know it just it didn't vibe with my sense of humor I guess and for that reason other than like a scene towards the end that I really enjoyed I was bored with this book um it just didn't work for me and I gave it three out of five stars. Okay, next I read Slasher Witch at the Water Park, which is available on KU for free. I saw the title and I thought, yes, we have a slasher, we have a witch, we have a water park in the summertime, perfect read. And this book is gives you exactly what it says it's going to give you. It gives you a slasher witch and a water park. And this starts off with a bog witch who is woken up because there's a water park that's been built kind of over like her swamp land. They're still behind, like behind the fence, they're still part of her swamp. And she is awoken from, like she's been asleep or sleeping in the swamp for decades and she gets woken up and she's like, oh hey, what is this, what is this place? I see all these tubes in the sky and there's lots of people everywhere. So. She heads out into the water park and she starts uh, drinking some frozen lemonades. And she's like, this is delicious. I like this. She's, you know, just doing her summer thing. And they kick her out because, well, I guess she didn't pay to come in. And she looks like a swamp witch. So she's like, that was rude. She gets back in there and just causes total chaos people dying left and right. Um, all of, she makes it so that all of the things come to life. So like the water slides, all of like the, the octopus character and the frog characters that they have like in the kitty area, they all come to life and they are hell bent on revenge for the switch. 
she just wants to go drink margaritas and get her drink on. And people are being so rude. So while all this craziness is going on, she's just drinking, drinking, going through the gift shop. She gets herself a cute little uh, octopus stuffed animal. And they're just hanging out, having, having a fun day. And people all around them are just dying. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, I highly recommend this book. I gave it three out of five stars. I had a fun time, but you know, I can't take it too seriously. But I would like to see Zelda the Witch and other little, um, maybe like a roller rink or any other kind of fun, a bowling alley. I'd like to see her in all these places, just causing problems, getting drunk. <laughs> and then I was doing the Christmas Evil, the Christmas Evil in July readathon. And Krampus kind of took over and had a, a bingo board of his own, which I'll put up here. Now, it seems like Krampus was able to take over my Kindle because he put a book on there that I was not able to close out of at all. Like I could not go to my library. I couldn't do anything but see this book on there. So I was like, I guess I have to read this. Maybe if I read this, um, Krampus will let me access the rest of my Kindle again. And so he put this book called Paddled by Krampus. Look, I'm not a big smut reader, but you put something like Paddled by Krampus. I don't even know what to say. I was, I had like a morbid curiosity of what was going to happen in this book. So this is a very quick read. I want to say it was like under 70 pages or something. And the title tells you exactly what you're going to get. Uh, we have the, there is an attempt at making a plot as much as there is an attempt at making a plot in any kind of adult film. Okay. So we have this young wizard who is staying at this like castle of her mentor and he makes this Look, I'm not even going to try to explain this. Uh, this is a story about getting spanked <laughs> by Krampus. Th that's it. It's a sexual story about getting spanked by Krampus. So if spanking is your thing, you might be into this. Spanking's not really my thing. Um, but I didn't hate it. I don't know what that says about me. It was just interesting enough and short enough that I read it. Anywho, once I read it, I was able to access the rest of my Kindle. So uh, you better watch out because Krampus is watching even in July. All right, I'm down to my last two reads. I'm sorry, this is probably getting really long. Um, the first one is Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, this was Amy Noel's uh, book pick for her book club for July. And I have not read a Chuck Palahniuk, Chuck Alan Nook book. I can't say his name. I mean, I have not read one of his books in many, many years. Um, I've read Fight Club and I've read Haunted and I know that there were some other ones I read, but I don't really remember them, which I don't know what that says. He, he just writes weird shit, basically. Um, and this is no exception. This is about a young woman who was a supermodel and she gets in this horrible accident where her jaw is shot off. <laughs> so she has like no jaw at all. Um, just kind of has her tongue flapping around. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of body horror in this and it's basically her living her life after this accident and seeing how her relationships with people have changed. She befriends somebody who is in speech therapy and they kind of start traveling around together and they go to these open houses of rich people and go through their bathroom cabinet and steal medications and take them and sell them and I don't know. It's it's a weird wild ride. Um, there is a part of me, because I am a pharmacist, uh, that I did kind of enjoy all of the drug talk in a way because there's a lot of drugs mentioned here 
I mean, this book is from, I think, 99? Yeah, 99. So there's a lot of drugs mentioned in here that are no longer made. They're completely obsolete, but they were around, I guess, at the beginning of my career, and they're no longer around. I don't think anybody else would care about that or be interested, but kind of made it fun for me. I will say I read most of this wondering just being unsure if I liked it or not. I'm like, it's bizarre. It's got my attention, but I don't know if I like it. But then as things started getting revealed towards the end, I did end up liking it. Um, I liked how it all kind of fit together. If you're familiar with Fight Club, it is the same sort of thing. I mean, I'm not giving away the twist. I'm just saying that um, things are just not always how they seem until because you're just getting like these weird like flashes of what's happening in the present versus what was happening in the past and it all finally kind of comes together towards the end and it makes sense so it's a little fight club a little kind of pulp fictiony in that in that way so if you're not into that I could see how this would be very annoying but I thought it would kind of came together in the end and I had a good time reading it I gave it four out of five stars and the last book I read took me forever. It was Battle Royale. I mean, this is a pretty chonky book, okay? So this has been sitting on my shelf for a while. It was on my list of 23 to read in 2023. Um, the premise to me was very interesting. Um, it was about a, basically the government, the Japanese government will take a, high school class, I think grade nine, and randomly take a class and put them on an island and make them fight to the death. I'm gonna put this down because it's heavy. So I found that premise very interesting. They are all given a bag of supplies, like a small bag of supplies that has food and water, and then a random weapon. And the rep weapon could be anywhere from like a gun or a fork. <laughs> Just luck of the draw. So I was really invested in this book at the beginning and then I got to the middle part and for me it kind of dragged on a little too long. Like I feel like you could cut out 100 to 150 pages out of this in the middle and we would be just fine. And I'm not opposed to reading longer books especially if there is a lot of like character development going on. But for me, our characters spend a long time, like way too long, just worrying about what other people are doing on this island. They're like, hmm, um, is so-and-so, do you think she's a fighter? Or do you think that she is going to try to fight against this game? Um, I, I bet she's not playing the game. And it just went on for so long and I didn't care <laughs> um, because there's 40 students. So I think that there's just so many people and a lot of their names because you know <laughs> I'm American these are names that are not familiar to me but a lot of the names also sounded some of the characters names were like they either had the same last name or they had very similar names and it was kind of hard to keep track of them all uh the book does a pretty good job at like reminding you who's who if they're important enough obviously all 40 people can't be super important to the reader but there was just a lot of people to go through. So I feel like if we would have just cut some of those characters out or just cared a little bit less about what they were thinking um, about other people, I would have been a little bit more invested. However, the end really brought it, I thought. And I mean, there's a lot of great action scenes in this book. And I would say that the end, the end got me. I really liked the end of this book. So I was glad that it um, came together the way it did. So if you took out the middle part, this would have been probably a five star read for me, but I'm giving this four out of five stars. There is also a movie for this that I ended up watching just last night, which was quite excellent. Um, there are parts, they changed it up a little bit. Um, there are parts that made a lot more sense in the movie than it did in the book. 
um, but then there's parts of the book that I liked more. Um, there is an excellent scene in the movie with a hand grenade. That's all I'm going to say. Um, they did <laughs> kind of make the characters a little bit over the top in the movie. There is one of the main characters seriously just looks like Johnny Rotten, <laughs> like a Japanese Johnny Rotten to me. I thought that was hilarious. But other than that, it was a fun time. I think what kind of took a, a little wind out of the sails of this book was that if you've already read things like Hunger Games or watched Squid Game, you've already kind of experienced a lot of the, sh like you've, you're already over the shock of the setup for this book. And I know that this book came first, like it was the original. Um, I just didn't read it first. So the shock of the whole setup is just not, it doesn't hit as hard when you've already kind of seen and read things like that. Whew, that was a lot of talking about books. So if you are still hanging in there with me, thank you very much for listening to me babble. I will break this up so that people can skip ahead to whatever book they want to hear about. And oh, what was my favorite book of the month? It was not the book I rated five stars, which was Wonder. Um, even though that is an excellent book, my favorite book of the month was Mayfly. Um, this, I can't wait to see what else this author can put out because I really love this book. Um, I actually listened to it and before I was even done listening to it, I went out and bought a physical copy of the book because, well, first of all, the cover is stunning, but, um, I, I want to reread it again. I'd like to like try to catch all of the books and there's a lot of books and a lot of music that is referenced in the book so I'd like to kind of probably tab those so if you have made it this far leave me an eyeball emoji um as like a kind of nod to my favorite book this month and let me know down below what was your favorite read of July have you read any of the ones that I read did you agree or disagree I'd like to hear your opinions that is my favorite part about doing this channel is getting uh, your feedback about the same things that I read because I like to see it from different perspectives. So thank you so much for watching me ramble on about books. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day and stay spooky.